This much of my hair was new growth and this much of my hair was straight and stringy. How did you grow your hair so long? How long have you been natural? I'm gonna answer all of y'all questions today. We're gonna talk about my natural hair journey. If you haven't already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Ask me some natural hair questions. I wanna make sure y'all have all the information that you need. Subscribe to my channel as well. And if you are not new here, thank you for coming back to Mr. Your Girl for another video. I got y'all in a tizzy on my YouTube short where I said people always ask me what am I mixed with. That made y'all really, really upset. I don't know why. I get asked that all the time. So today we're gonna talk about my natural hair journey so I can give y'all a little bit more insight so y'all can understand where I'm coming from when I say that that's offensive. First things first, up until me leaving high school, I never even washed my own hair. I always went to somebody to have my hair done. My older sister did it. It was never a position where I was in where I had to be washing my own hair. So I didn't know anything about hair care at all, even when I was getting perms. Let's get into the timeline. So summer of my senior year of high school, like when I was getting ready to graduate, Way, I had to take senior pictures. That's when I got my last perm technically. So that was over 10 years ago, well over 10 years ago. But hear me out, when y'all ask me how long I've been natural, I would never say oh, over 10 years because, let me just tell you why. So I got my last perm in summer of 2011. There was a woman who was doing my hair. She was my mom's friend. Her name is Pat. Hey Pat, be watching. Pat would do my hair every two weeks and then I would get a perm whenever it was needed. I don't even remember back then how often that was. Maybe every six months, eight or nine months. I'm not really sure. But Pat would give me a perm. In between, she would always shampoo my hair, blow dry it, flat iron it, and then I would wrap it in between to try to maintain it up until the next time it was time for me to go to her, right? At the end of 2011, Pat was getting married to a guy in the military. She told her she was moving to Texas. Heart broken okay i didn't know what i was gonna do because like i said i've never done my own hair it was a very stressful time i started asking around like does anybody know anybody that does hair because i need to get a perm i need to get a flat iron like i don't know what i'm doing with my own hair it was taking me three four hours to do a wash day insanity but i was looking for somebody else to do my hair a lot of people recommended a lady named lynn i just checked the records october of 2012 so i actually went well over six months doing my own hair october of 2012 that was the first time that i went to lynn and when i went to lynn i said i need a perm real bad my new growth is looking a mess i don't know what to do with it perm me up slick me down after lynn wet my hair she was like a perm you need a perm why do you want to get a perm and i'm like that's all, I, that's all I know. My old hairstylist has been gone for so long that now I'm like, yeah, it's been almost a year. I need a perm because my hair looks a mess. And she was like, you don't need a perm. I can get you the same straight results that you're looking for without giving you a perm because I think your new growth looks beautiful. I'm like, beautiful. Being so uneducated at the time, I'm thinking that new growth was nappy or rough or damaged and dry. But she was like, when I wet your hair, your new growth looks beautiful. So like, I think I can give you the same results without perming your hair right now. So I didn't get a perm. So Lynn did my hair every two weeks. I was going to her consistently the same way I was going to my previous hairstylist, but she was flat ironing me without getting me a perm. And I was loving the results. Sometimes I would get straight, sometimes I would get curls. I just kind of mixed it up because Lynn always just knew what to do. Like I would leave work on lunch break and go see Lynn. That's how loyal and faithful I was to getting my hair done every two weeks. So unfortunately in 2014, was this 2014? Yeah. In 2014, Lynn decided she was gonna move too. It's the abandonment for me. She was gonna move, but she was moving like an hour and a half south towards St. Louis. And at that time I was like, oh, I'm just gonna drive. I'm just gonna drive to her. That was the solution for me at the time. But I realized very quickly that wasn't gonna be feasible for me to be doing. I was in college, I was working. It just didn't make sense for me to be driving down there. So at this point I was like, okay, Ebony, you have to learn how to do your own hair. Cause if not, you're gonna be finding another hairstylist. You're gonna keep spending this money every two weeks. Act like you got some sense and try to learn how to do your own hair. So that's what I did. I use the term do my own hair very loosely. So what I would do is I would shampoo it, I would detangle it, and then I would blow dry it and flat iron it myself. Look at some of the fails, the flat iron fails. I thought I was eating at this time. But I was just like, I can't do it as good as her, but I can do it good, you know? I went from getting my hair flat ironed every two weeks to me having to do it like every day or every other day because I was trying to copy those results, but I couldn't do it as good myself. So you could imagine that somebody flat ironing their hair every day or every other day could be so, so damaging. Y'all, when I wet my hair, this is what it looked like. Now, I'm not saying that it didn't look okay. It had a little bit of curl to it because I wasn't getting perms, but it was so heat damaged that it wasn't even funny. It wasn't even funny. It looked a mess. It was uneven. You could see like shorter parts in the front, longer parts in the back. One side, <laughs> one side was thicker than the other. I was just like, this is a mess. At that time, I considered doing a big chop, but 
big tops wasn't so popular then like now the girls are not scared to cut all their hair off do the short blunt cut and grow their hair from there but for me back then it just wasn't that popular and i just couldn't picture myself cutting all my hair off it just that just wasn't in the cards for me. So I was like, boom, I already stopped getting perms, but my hair is so damaged, I need to really, really try to start taking care of my hair. The first thing I did to try to start taking care of my hair was like, I gotta stop using all this heat because it's literally frying my hair. Y'all should have seen the things I was doing to my hair. Like I would flat iron it sometimes when it was still half wet. The ghetto, the ghetto. But I was like, I gotta stop using all this heat in my hair. So what I did was I started doing twist outs. Now, twist outs were my go-to because they hid the fact that this much of my hair was new growth and this much of my hair was straight and stringy from getting perms and using heat. Twist outs just kind of worked for me for that reason. So I did a lot of twist outs in the beginning. Um, I was still mixing the flat iron because I would be like, uh-uh, this look a mess. I don't think this looks good. Twist outs worked a little bit, but I was still going back to that heat. It was like a needle in my arm. Like, I got it. I, this is the only thing that looks good to me. And again, so uneducated, so naive and just brainwashed from the like, beauty standards at the time that I was like this twist out don't look good even though looking back now I'm like dang girl you was kind of you was eating that little one little thing you was eating that little thing while Lynn was doing my hair we also had dyed it this really really pretty auburn color after it faded it didn't really look that good but I was also trying to grow dye out so at the time I'm not getting perms I'm trying not to use heat I got dye in my hair so you can imagine how damaged my hair really really was the reason why I said I had to transition twice because first I stopped getting perms and I transitioned from that to being natural but natural meant heat and I had to transition again I feel like from dry heat damaged brittle hair. By this point we we're at the time where I was like fed up and I was like okay cool let me figure out this no heat thing. So I started doing a no heat challenge. The first no heat challenge lasted like 24 days. I vividly remember that because I was trying so hard. It was the hardest thing to do. It lasted like 24 days and then I flat ironed my hair. And then after that I went like 35 days. And then after that I went three months. And then I used heat. And after that I went six months. And then I used heat. And then after that I went nine months. And then I used heat. So time is flying. At this point we're like all the way in 2016, 2017. And I was like I could do this. I could do this so by that time I started only using heat once a year every year in the winter time because I live where all four seasons go in the winter time when it was cool and I know I wouldn't damage my flat iron from heat and humidity outside I would get my hair flat iron once a year and so that became the process for me so in between the way that I actually was able to get my hair healthy was number one I stopped using heat when I stopped using heat on my hair I seen so much growth and my hair just flourished like it wasn't so dry it wasn't burnt it wasn't necessarily popping how it is now but it was you can see the change happening when I stopped using heat when I stopped using heat I was a product junkie just like the rest of us trying to figure out what works for your hair I bought a lot of products I literally used to have a shoe rack up on the back of my bathroom door and it was just full of different products because I was somebody who was trying to figure out what works for me and that was like around 2017 2018 so I haven't really really been on this healthy hair journey for as long as I haven't been getting perms, if that makes sense. <laughs> the second thing was learning about deep conditioner. That was so pivotal to the hair journey for me. When I started deep conditioning my hair, I used to sit a shower cap on and I used to sleep with it overnight. Now, I don't have time for that. But before when I was first kind of learning and I was learning like, oh, this says sit on for an hour or 45 minutes or overnight treatment. I used to take advantage of that for real, for real. So I used to put a shower cap on my head, I would sleep with deep conditioner in, or if I had two hours, three hours in between me washing and styling my hair, I would sit with deep conditioner on for so long. And that made me realize that my hair was growing so much stronger. I realized my hair became easier to detangle when it was wash day. I realized that my hair was so much more manageable and soft. So ever since then, I've been preaching deep conditioner. So when I first started going live on Facebook talking about natural hair, I really wasn't trying to educate. I was just doing my hair to help kind of pass the time. I would go on live, I would just do my hair, people would leave comments and I would talk to them back and it was just kind of something to get me through wash day. I realized that I kept telling everybody, you have to deep condition, you have to stop using heat. So a lot of times when I get questions of people saying, my hair won't grow past my shoulders, I know why it won't grow past your shoulders. You're either using too much heat or you're not deep conditioning. Or if you're somebody who wears wigs, in between those stylings, you're not doing what you should be doing. You're not taking those braids out, doing a scalp treatment, um, shampooing and deep conditioning and putting some oil on your scalp to get ready for the next wig. You are just taking a wig off, cleaning the edge, cleaning the glue off your baby hairs and then putting a wig back on and your scalp never got any love. Your hair never got any love. So a lot of times the answer to your problems are literally like 
one of maybe three or four things and I can guarantee that I can tell you why it won't grow past your shoulders. So people act like that's just like some kind of genetic curse. My hair won't grow past my shoulders. My hair won't grow past my shoulders. Take care of your hair. If you take care of your hair, I promise you. Like that's the way that I've seen results. People be like, what growth oil did you use? I never used the growth oil. I never used the growth oil. I tell people all the time, if I wanted to sell y'all a growth oil, I could have did that a long time ago and been like, this is what I used to grow my hair. But that's not true. And I got some integrity, okay? So I try to tell y'all how to take care of y'all hair more so than being like, oh, let me sell y'all a product to help it grow overnight. I know people selling the miracle oils. By all means, buy those if you want. Try them out. They could work for you. Um, but most of the time, taking care of your hair is going to be the reason why it grows. The last no heat challenge that I did wasn't even really a challenge. I just didn't have the urge to really get it flat earned and then winter came and I didn't get it flat earned and then my birthday came and it was springtime and I was like I'm not gonna get my hair flat earned in the spring because it's just gonna get messed up and so unintentionally I ended up going two years with no heat and I got my hair flat earned in January of 2021 I was pregnant at the time we was getting ready to go to Aspen that was this point my hair was super super healthy it was super long I really really loved the way my hair looked at this time that was the last time I used heat so my plan is to use heat in the winter like maybe in the next upcoming couple weeks Weeks. That has been another two years of me not using heat in my hair. The best thing for me to do was to start doing a lot of hairstyles and having fun with my hair. I try to make natural hair not such a task where it's like, oh, I'm dreading wash day. For me, doing different hairstyles and having fun with my hair is what makes it easier to not use heat. If you need inspiration for natural hairstyles, I have a bunch of YouTube shorts. I have a bunch of videos on my TikTok. There's a whole playlist of natural hair and you just see me doing different hairstyles, having fun with my hair so that it's not so boring and lackluster. Make sure y'all follow me on TikTok if you haven't already. I think we pretty much covered the entire timeline. So when y'all ask me how long I've been natural, that's kind of my answer. It's kind of a two part answer. Like it's not just the, oh, since 2011. I know when y'all are asking me that question, y'all trying to figure out how long did it take for me to grow my hair from short to this, but it's not that simple. It's like, it was a rocky road. You know what I'm saying? It was a little up and down. I didn't just grow my hair from point A to point B like that. It wasn't that simple so i don't want y'all to think that i'm gonna say oh i've been natural for five years or eight years and then you equate that to how fast you can grow your hair i'm more so here to help y'all learn how to take care of your hair so that it can become more manageable easier to do you can have more fun with it and in the meantime it's going to be growing i hope i answered it enough pictures for y'all i hope y'all were able to actually follow along with the timeline and the journey and if y'all have any more questions after watching this full video make sure you leave them in the comments i'm here for y'all i got some answers for y'all thank y'all again for watching make sure i come back for the next video